This is a modern fable of the big city. It's about a swinging bachelor with a problem. His boss. I'm sorry, Peter. I believe in married executives. No marriage, no promotion. He shared this problem with his friend, a hat check girl. Too bad you can't do what I do to protect myself in this place. What's that? Pretend you're married. And did she give him an idea? Yeah. Greta, you have given me the solution to my problem. A make-believe wife. That's the answer for my boss. Peter, you must be out of your mind. No, Greta, I mean it. I want you to be my wife. Occasionally. So she went on salary as his occasional wife. And they set up housekeeping. Peter in his apartment on the seventh floor, and Greta in her apartment on the ninth floor. To the lasting confusion of the fellow in between. The delights of bachelorhood as enjoyed by Peter Christopher. A sharp apartment well stocked with the best of spirits, the finest in delicacies, and the latest in blondes. Here, have a nightcap. Another one? First one didn't slow you down any. It's just that I have music inside me, Peter. When I hear that beat, it's go, go, go. Oh, careful, careful. <laughs> Peter. Mm-hmm? That's never stopped dancing. Never? Well, maybe eventually. It's more like it. get all the happiness I can handle. Peter, I just wanted you to be the first to know. Good. Don't tell anyone else about it tonight, then. I'm in love. Love. Mm. The play of the movie. I mean it this time, Peter. Greta, you always mean it. I know it, but this time it's different. It's really serious. Oh. Who is he? Umberto Ugatti. Well, that tells me a lot. Oh, he's a count. Well, he was a count in Italy. And he just comes over here and breaks up a marriage, huh? What does he think this is, an Italian movie? Listen, we may pretend to be married, but I am going back up to my apartment, and you are going back out there with your girlfriend. Linda. And if that isn't like an Italian movie, I don't know what is. You are really serious, huh? Hmm. Well, don't do anything rash. Like what? Well, like, uh, well, I don't know, like anything rash. Uh, I'll talk to you about it in the morning, okay? Okay. Good. Good. Night. Peter. What? Uh, Maybe I should say, bona notte. The object of Greta's rapt attention is none other than Count Umberto Ugatti, or as Greta more lovingly calls him, you, you. Oh, oh, tesoro. Grazie. Greta. For you. I don't understand. I'll give you the world. Oh? <laughs> Did you draw me? Not really. Why not? Oh, I don't think I could do you justice. Okay. Well, what I mean is, I couldn't make you as handsome as you are. Mm, well, I'll give you extra time. Private lessons, huh? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, Greta. Greta, sei così bella che, che mi fai girare la testa. I don't know what you're saying, but I love it.
This is a worried man. But with Peter, it's always worry. Wine, women, and worry. Dear Peter, I'm making my first dinner for you, you, and your salad dressing is so much better than mine. Thanks, Greta. Dear Peter, I ran out of lettuce. Sorry, Greta. She took my steak. Dearest Peter, please try to understand, Greta. Sorry, Greta. That does it. Come in. Buenas tardes. Yes, well, buenas tardes. Uh, <clears throat> yes, good evening. You wish something? Yes, I uh, wish to see Miss Patterson. Uh, I'm her neighbor from downstairs. Oh. Uh, Peter Christopher. <laughs> Count Umberto Gatti. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Miss Patterson, just uh, step out for a minute. She's coming back right away. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll wait if uh, you don't mind, Count. No, please, please do sit down. <laughs> very important for a man to, to get good exercise, you know? Otherwise, no muscles and, uh, <laughs> and he's nothing. Well, there's something to be said for the lean, wiry type, too. Uh, que cosa? Uh, what? Uh, I... Huh? Oh, just, uh, forget it. Uh, you were saying plenty of exercise and, um, how about work? Oh, no, no, no work, exercise, rest, and women. And that is, uh, how you say, the, uh, the good life. <laughs> yes. Uh, no work at all, huh? Well, I'm speaking of the ideal. Uh, but naturally, in our times, you know, one makes exceptions. <laughs> You're a model, aren't you? <laughs> that is one of the exceptions. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, have you known Miss Patterson long? Hmm? I wish, I wish, no, only a short time. You know, Creda, she know how to take care of a man. <laughs> Duh, this is a surprise. Huh, so I gather. I left a note. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure you did. Have you met the Count? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. I introduced myself to him, uh, your neighbor from downstairs. Oh, good. Yes. I'd like to see you for a minute, Greta. Well, you can talk to me in the kitchen while I'm getting our dinner. Uh-huh. Did you miss me, yo, -Yo? Every minute. I know what you're going to say. Oh, no, no, you don't. You think I'm here to complain, don't you? Uh -huh. I'm not here to complain. Oh, you're not? No. Oh. I just want my steak, my salad dressing, my lettuce, and my wine. Peter. Look, I have a date with Linda tonight. Again? Well, you live your life, I live mine. Listen, you'll ruin my romance. I took the trouble to come in the front door so I wouldn't ruin your romance. I think that's all you can reasonably ask. Well, listen, this is the first dinner I've ever made for you. You and I want it to be absolutely perfect. Huh. I get the feeling if it's free, it's perfect. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. He's just fond of the good life, you know? Well, after all, he is a count. Uh-huh. Greta, it may be none of my business, but I think you're out of your mind. You're right. It is none of your business. OK. Just give me my steak, my salad dressing, my lettuce, and my wine. I'll compromise. Take the wine. Millie Grazi. Uh, Mille Grazie. Ah. Oh, that was a way out meal. Yeah. Uh, Peter, um, why don't we not dance tonight? Mm. Would, um, would you excuse me for just a minute? I've got an important business phone call to make. Hmm? Have some more wine, though. Uh, Greta, listen, uh, about this Umberto fellow. Uh, not now, Sally. Hello? Greta, listen, for your own sake, there's something you should know. 
And for your own sake, Harriet, there's something you should know. Two words, justifiable homicide. It's been clear for hours. Oh? Believe it or not, some girls don't like to watch a man dial a phone. I'm sorry about that, Peter. Hmm. What happened? Run out of espresso coffee? Despite your sarcasm, I'm much too happy to get angry. Well, that's depressing. Peter, I really am sorry if my happiness interferes with your vested self-interest. Greta, you may not believe it, but I am interested in your well-being. Really? Yeah. Well, then, there's something I have to tell you. What's that? <clears throat> Umberto proposed. I did, huh? Mm. And what'd you say? Yes. Well, I guess congratulations are in order. There is something that I'd like to talk to you about, though. Well, let's just leave it at congratulations. OK. Well, now, what are you going to do about Mr. Brown's? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to think about that tonight. Hey, got a little wine left, and uh, I think this calls for a celebration. Peter, you are happy for me, aren't you? If you're happy, I'm happy. To my ex-occasional wife. Now, I've gone over all the possibilities. Just splitting up is out of the question. Bronze would fire me in a minute. What about an accident? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, I've thought of that. Accidents are no good. You need witnesses. The only way out is a simple disappearance. Yeah. I'll go to work someday, and when I come home, you're not here. And then what happens? Nothing, nothing. I'll just play it by ear. And, uh, oh, maybe in a couple of days, you know, you'll send me some kind of a note. Uh, don't try to find me, that kind of stuff. That's pretty dramatic. Well, you give me maximum sympathy, and as a way out, it gives us the most options. OK, well, when do I disappear? How about yesterday? Now, let's see. I'll start to drop a few meaningful hints. Well, what's the rush? Well, I may want to marry again, too. Morning, Mr. Brahms. Wally. Uh, sorry I'm late, sir. It's about time. Oh, I'm just not used to fixing my own breakfast. Better sick again? Oh, well, something like that. Oh. Well, Wally here has brought up a good point. On the Brahms bus going to the picnic, uh, Mrs. Brahms and I, of course, will sit in seats one and two. Oh, just as it should be, sir. Yes. Well, the question is, who will occupy seats three and four? Wally and Vera, or you and Greta? You're both uh, co-chairman of the picnic, so it seems to me you're equally entitled to the honor. The great honor, sir. Oh, well, that seems like it may be too strong a phrase for the situation, but I suppose three and four do carry a certain amount of prestige. Sir, perhaps I should tell you beforehand that Greta may not be coming to the picnic. Greta not coming? No, sir. I, uh, I can speak freely in front of Wally. He's such a good friend. She seems to have disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, sir. Well, when I got home last night, she just wasn't there. Gee, Vera would never do a thing like that. I just don't understand, Peter. Well, I, I don't understand it fully myself, sir. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to wait and see. You're not going to notify the police? No, no, uh, not yet, anyhow. Somehow, I just don't think this is a case for them. But I guess that Wally and Vera can have seats three and four. Something's wrong, Wally. A man just doesn't give up three and four that easily. Yes? Peter Christopher. Ah, that's me. Sergeant Crock, 37th Precinct. Can I come in? Uh, yes, of course. What uh, can I do for you, Sergeant? You got a missing wife? Um, <clears throat> what do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Why, well, I mean, uh, who says so? A fellow by the name of Brahms. M. Brahms, uh, 1079 Park Avenue. Uh, yes, yes, well, uh, my wife, she is missing, but, uh, well, nothing to worry about. I can see you're not worried. When was the last time you saw the little lady? Uh, yesterday, uh, before I went to work. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a pretty fancy table for a man who's supposed to be eating alone. Looks like it's set up for two people. Oh, well, I, I, I can explain that. Go ahead. Well, you see, uh, last night I had dinner on that side of the table, and tonight I had dinner on this side of the table. You know how it is when the wife's away, you don't bother to clean up. In my house, I always clean up. I see. Little lady, did she ever, uh, did she ever go away like this before? No, no, this is the first time. First time. Mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. No note? No, no, uh, uh, not that I found. What's this? Dearest Peter, please try to understand. Greta, Greta, that's your, uh, wife? Yes, that's my wife. Uh-huh. There's, uh... Blood on this piece of paper. Oh, I know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's, it's not her blood. It's it's from a a, a piece of steak. Piece of steak. Yeah. Sure. Look. Hey, really. It, it, it's a long and involved story, and it, it has nothing at all to do with her disappearance. <sighs> Can I see her clothes? Her clothes? Uh, you you really want to see her clothes, huh? Yeah, I really do. <laughs> well, sure. They're uh, they're in the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> where else would they be? Look, it, it's pretty messy in there, and. Uh, I know you're so neat. Why don't you just let me go and straighten up? <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, you, you don't mind. Uh, well, I do, and, and, and Greta, my, my wife, uh, she'd kill. Uh, I mean, she would mind. She'd mind. Uh, uh, I'll just be back in a minute. Well, I guess we'd better start making our wedding plans. Oh, I'll leave all that to you. Well, I'm sure my mother and dad would like us to be married at home in Dayton. Fine, fine. I, I want to meet your father and, and talk about the dowry. Oh, he'll be anxious to discuss your plans. What are you going to do? I mean, I'm sure modeling's only temporary. Do? Elugati doesn't do anything, except under extreme conditions. No, seriously. Seriously? That's why I want to talk about the dowry. But it's not going to be a big dowry. We're not wealthy people. I realize that. And I'm not a fortune hunter, but... but Nobility is nobility, whether at home or in America. And starvation is starvation, whether at home or in America. Well, nevertheless, I have no intention of, of degrading the name of Ugati by being the first one in 11 centuries to work. Oh, you understand that, huh? mai pensato che questo amico tuo fosse una... Ma che cosa? Umberto, would you mind waiting in the living room? But look, I... I got... Please. Va bene. Peter, what are you doing? Brahms reported that your disappearance to the police and there's a very suspicious sergeant nosing it around downstairs. Suspicious how? Uh, well, uh, I think the thought of murder has crossed his mind. Well, I, I, I still don't understand what you're doing up well, here. If I can't at least produce some of your clothes, he's going to think I killed you and got rid of all the evidence. Well, I have the feeling I ought to go down with you and help oh, you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll take care of it. Besides, if you suddenly reappeared to get me out of this, I wouldn't know what to tell Brahms a second time. Are you sure you can handle it? No, but I'll try. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, Greta. Hmm? Rivederci. Will you cut that out? Hi. You Mrs. Christopher? Mrs. Christopher? Yeah. No, I'm Linda Robin. There is no Mrs. Christopher, yet. I think you'd better step inside, Miss. Sergeant Crock, 37th Precinct. Police? Yeah. Ah, uh, I'll be through straightening up in just a minute, Sergeant. Hi, Peter. Hi, Linda. I was just talking with a young lady here. You know, there are one or two little inconsistencies I'd like to clear up. Yes, Seymour, that, that's the situation. I need a lawyer, and you're it. Uh, look, ju just, just meet me at the 37th precinct. I'll explain the whole thing to you when I see you. Uh, 
Oh, okay, right. Thanks. Gee, Peter, I wish you'd explain it to me. Okay, Christopher, let's go. Oh, well, it's a kind of a long story, Linda, and uh, a dull one, but uh, I'll call you, huh? Peter! <laughs> Ron, uh, say goodbye to Linda Robin. Hi. Good Hi. fun. Uh, friend of the family. Well, I would have been here sooner, but I got a speeding ticket from some stupid... Uh, Mr. Bronze, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Croc of the 37th Precinct. How do you... <laughs> well, may I say that one rotten apple doesn't spoil the barrel. Thanks. I feel better already. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter, but despite what you said, I just felt that I had to call in the police. I know that you feel more secure just knowing they're with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Any clues yet, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah, I, uh... I got a couple of sneaky suspicions. Well, Mr. Rogers, you see, uh, uh, we, we were just on our way down to the uh, police station. See, uh, Sergeant Croc seems to think that Greta met foul play at the hands of one Peter Christopher. <laughs> you mean that you think she's... and he? Oh, that's impossible. Hi, everybody. What's wrong? Greta! <laughs> Greta. Greta. Darling, it's so good to see you. Oh, boy, is it good to see you. Well, it's good to be back. Mm. I sure hope I don't have to make that trip again. Uh, a trip? Uh, uh, where did you go? Oh, dear, didn't you get my note? No, uh, no, 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 darling, I didn't. Oh, Peter, I just had to rush home to talk some sense into my sister. You see, it seems that she was involved with this man who was madly in love with her, but it turned out that he expected her to support him. Well, she finally saw the light, and that was that. I'm glad. So am I. Uh, well, Sergeant, it uh, looks like we won't need your services anymore. <laughs> see, I told you not to worry. Una momento. <laughs> you, uh, you sure you're Mrs. Christopher? Positive. I can vouch for that, Sergeant. Yeah. Well, then you had better come down to the station and vouch. It was your complaint in the first place. What a momento. Well, I'm certainly glad you're back. But I have a feeling there's more to this than meets the eye. But, uh, you know me, I don't like to butt in. Oh, yes, we know that, Mr. Brown. Oh, Franz. Well, good night. Good night. Say, Sergeant. About that speeding ticket, I... <laughs> hey, thank you for coming down. Thank you for trying to warn me. Hitch in the wedding plans? More like an indefinite postponement. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Little uh, difference in point of view, huh? Well, you might say that. I was looking for security and protection and to be taken care of. And? Unfortunately, so was he. <laughs> problem solved, Peter can now concentrate on the more pressing problems of the business world. Yes, yes, I think that looks fine. What do the co-chairman of the picnic think? Oh, it looks just fine to me, sir. It's a great poster, Mr. Brahms. <laughs> a great poster. Well, I thought having my picture on it might be a bit too much, you know what I mean? Oh, that's what makes it great, sir. You really think so? <laughs> Why, of course. Without your picture on it, Mr. Brahms, it'd be nothing but a bunch of words. Uh. <laughs> and I guess we'll leave it that way. You can fold it up, uh, leave the picture on the outside, avoid smudges. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Uh, Peter, you know, I just can't wait to see you and Greta in the sack race. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> we'll be there, sir. I always say you can tell a lot about a marriage from watching a couple in the sack race. Well, Barrett, I won it last year, if you recall, sir. Uh, that's true, Wally, but you didn't have Peter and Greta to compete against. <laughs> Peter was a bachelor then. Yes, the good old days. You don't mean that. I think he does. Oh, of course, I don't mean it. Why, <laughs> these are the good old days. Ah, the fun and pleasure of being married. <laughs>